Hello everyone, welcome to what if Deku learned breathing techniques and becomes Demon Slayer Part 3. Before we start please go support Tichi67 for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. CH.11, the Hashira's glares, Izuku Pav, it's been about a week since I had my mission with Najire. She calls every once in a while, but she's usually busy. Her and Momo met a couple days ago, Momo tried to kill her when Najira asked if she was willing to share. Najire later said she was just kidding, but Momo clung to my arm the rest of that day, while glaring at Najire. Najire told me she's gotten a little better with fellow slayers, but she still relapses sometimes. However, I still said I was proud of her and to keep trying. Right now though I'm at the Demon Slayer HQ sitting across from Nozomi Kamado, the leader of Demon Slayer Corporation having a cup of tea while talking about random things. After our first meeting all those months ago Nozomi and I have actually become pretty good friends. We meet up at her estate every Sunday to have tea and just talk with each other she enjoys it, since I don't really address her with Sama or anything like that. Which she said was a nice change of pace, however, due to us being good friends, it hurts seeing her like this especially every weekend. Her condition has obviously gotten worse with the disease now touching her good eye's side, causing her to slowly lose her vision in that eye. She now needs help getting places with her successor, Aki Kamado, leading her everywhere. Aki is a six-year-old girl that looks exactly like her mother, however she oddly mature for her age, obviously trained for when Nozomi finally passes away and when she has to take over. The reason for today's get-together was different, today Nozomi will introduce me to the Hashira and explain to them our goal and my purpose. Hopefully, they take it well, I'm not worried about my parents, I'm more worried about the other Hashira. The Hashira meeting is in 30 or so minutes and I can't help but feel nervous. Nozomi quickly noticed. Nozomi. Izuku. It'll be fine no need to be so nervous. They listen to reason. Izuku. Sai I hope you're right. It will be awkward though, I mean you're going to tell them some slayer they never met or heard of is stronger than the men is your right hand man. That will surely piss off one of the older Hashira. Nozomi. Yes, I can see that being a problem, but trust me they'll come around. This mission is more important than titles and status, I know they will understand. Suddenly the door opened to the room we were chatting in, I turned around and saw two eight-year-old boys that were identical. They both had a red burgundy hair with a little black at the base, one had pink eyes and the other golden like Nozomi. They quickly bowed and came and the one with pink eyes spoke first. Leader Sama the Hashira have arrived and are waiting for your presence. Nozomi. Sai Daisuk, I already told you to stop calling me that you make it seem like we're strangers. I'm your mother for a reason, that goes for you to Isao. The twins. Yes mother. They were Daisuk and Isao Kamado were Nozomi's firstborns and usually the ones that helped her with everything, be it paperwork or something as simple as walking. Nozomi tried to get up to attend the meeting, but she quickly collapsed back to the floor. I caught her before that happened though. Her children all quickly came to check on her. Izuku. Nozomi we don't have to do it today we can reschedule for a better day for your health. Nozomi. Cough cough no we must do it now we can't afford to wait any longer. Children please help me to the garden the meeting must start now. Children. Yes mother. Nozomi. Stand close to the screen door you'll know when to come out. Nozomi got up a second time, but this her two sons on both sides of her guided her slowly to the garden, with Aki following close behind. I knew deep down that Nozomi doesn't have long maybe another three or so years. This saddened me deeply due to how close we got honestly at this point, I would consider her another sister or another best friend like Achako. I followed them until I got to the screen door and leaned against it waiting for my signal. I hope you're right Nozomi. Narrator Pav, the Hashira can be seen standing around the garden just talking amongst themselves mostly just about random things, like their love lives, kids, missions and any rumors. But they were all thinking the same thing why did leader Sama call us for a meeting? Those thoughts would be answered shortly as Nozomi has just arrived opening the screen door to the garden while being escorted by her children. The Hashira in an instant were kneeling in front of the platform of the house, while Nozomi was helped to a kneeling position. The first to speak was the brother of Nozomi, the Thunder Hashira. Hikaru Agatsuma. Hikaru. Master, I hope you are feeling well today and are in good health. May I ask why have you called us today when we had our monthly meeting last week? All the Hashira minus Hikaru. I wanted to greet Master today. Nozomi. I'm fine thank you for the concern, Sai, but didn't I tell you already to stop calling me master brother? Call me my name or just sister you're making me feel old. Plus lightly up a little you're only 29. Hikaru. Sweat drop sorry Nozomi. Nozomi. To answer your question Hikaru, I must tell you a secret I have been keeping from you guys for far too long, and I believe it's time for you to know. I'm sorry for breaking your trust. This shocked the Hashira down to the core because they believed that Nozomi told them everything. However, a woman with long white hair put into a ponytail who was wearing a solid ice blue Hayori, spoke up to defend her master. 
This woman was Rei Todoroki the Ice Hashira the wife to the Flame Hashira. Enji Todoroki. Rei. Master there is no need to apologize. I'm sure that you had a good reason for not telling us. The Zomi. Thank you Rei, I do have a reason whether it's good or not is up to you guys. The reason I didn't tell you is because the person I was working with wasn't strong enough and his survival is the utmost importance. The reason I'm telling you now is because I believe it's time he gets help from my strongest slayers to complete his purpose and maybe even help you guys. The man stood up with anger in his eyes, he had gray hair, green eyes, with scars all over his body, he wore a brown cloak instead of a Hayori. This was the fist of Shira. Takeo Komodo. Takeo. What is so important about this brat that you couldn't tell us your own Hashira? The Zomi lifted her finger and put it over her mouth. Instantly everyone calmed down a little including you kneeled back down and lowered his head. Takeo. I'm sorry for lashing out master. The Zomi. It's okay Takeo. The reason he is so important is because he is the only one that can challenge the demon king and possibly win. This caused all the Hashira's eyes to widen in shock. It is quite common knowledge that the demon king is nigh indestructible after the failed battle all those centuries ago. To learn of someone that can actually kill the king is mind-blowing. A woman with chocolate brown skin and white hair and with red eyes while wearing a green Hayori with several sewn pieces on it. She was the beast Hashira. Rumi Yasajiyama. Rumi. You have to be joking master there is no way someone like that exists. And if he did how come he isn't a Hashira yet? The Zomi. Simple, Rumi I kept him hidden because if the demon king got wind of this, he would just kill my right hand before he could even get started. Plus he is already at Hashira level maybe even stronger than that. The Karu. You must be kidding sister he can't be stronger than us. You said it yourself we're the strongest Hashira since the Taisho period. And why did you call him your right hand? The Zomi. You are correct brother I did say you are the strongest Hashira the corporation has ever seen. However, this man is probably one of the strongest slayers in corporation. History. I gave him the title of my right hand due to this strength and his purpose. Plus he reached the requirements for a Hashira months ago. Anyway I believe it is time to meet him and learn your new mission. Izuku. Suddenly a white-haired 20-year-old male wearing a green and black checkered Hayori. With his most defining feature being freckles on his cheeks in the shape of diamonds and his bright green eyes. He was instantly recognized by his two parents. Inko and Tashi. Izuku. Izuku Pav. I looked up from my kneeling position next to Nozomi to stare at the Hashira who were still kneeling in respect to Nozomi. From a quick glance I could see their reactions the wood, shadow, flower, stone, and flame Hashira had looks of indifference, probably because they'll follow Nozomi's orders no matter what. The next set of Hashira which were the beast, ice, my parents, and thunder had looks of confusion, disappointment and shock, the shock just my parents. The last ones the fist and water had looks of rage on their faces, I don't blame them I heard from my parents that they worked really hard to get their spots in the Hashira. Nozomi. This is my right hand, Izuku Midoriya. Suddenly I heard rustling as if someone had gotten up quickly. I turned to the noise and saw the water Hashira stood up. She was around my age maybe a year older, she wore a light blue Hayori that had waves all over it, she had short black spiky hair with ocean blue eyes with white pupils. She was quite pretty, but it was hard to tell with a large scowl on her face. I'm sorry master, but I refuse to believe this boy can be at Hashira level already, if I may fight him to prove these claims, then I will be satisfied. The Zomi would probably deny this so we can get down to business. She said it herself we don't have any more time to wait. We have to get this done or, the Zomi. Of course Liko. If this will satisfy you then I will allow it. You heard her Izuku go fight her. But please don't make a mess everywhere. Or not. I stood up and went to the same spot all those months ago when I showed Nozomi I was a sun user. Kinda nostalgic, but now I was going to fight extremely pissed off female Hashira. Now that I thought about it I haven't spared with someone since I was still Tsuguko under dad. Do I still have to hold back like I did against Izumi? Well she is a Hashira, so I think she will be fine. Also I can feel that she is strong but not as strong as me. I looked up and saw. What was her name again? Never mind, she has her sword drawn already, I can tell she is strong with water breathing, due to her sword being completely blue. I quickly got mine ready for the duel. Izuku. We don't have to do this you know. No backing out now, prove to me that you belong at master's side. Izuku. So be it. The woman quickly lunged at me with a slash which I easily parried and went with stab as encounter. She however quickly dodged and went with a upper monk cut to slice my abdomen. I dodged out of the way, but she quickly followed with a overhead that I blocked before giving her a sidekick to her abdomen to send her back. She landed and prepared a form water breathing. Third form, flowing dance she quickly started striking at me in multiple angles, with me barely able to block each strike, she was about to strike my unprotected back when I used my own form. Sun breathing. 
11th form, fake rainbow she struck an after image instead which I could tell confused her, but I assume her instinct saved her when I attempted a slash at her back. She blocked just in time, but I still sent her skidding back. I stood up straight and took in another breathe, ready to continue while she did the same. Izuku. We don't have to do this you know. Like I said prove to me you belong here because all I see is the Deku that ran away when things got too tough. Isn't that right Izuku Yagi? So, she's smarter than she lets on. She easily figured out that I'm the same kid from all those years ago. The water Hashira quickly charged me with another form water breathing. Fourth form, striking tide before she was able to slash me, I quickly used my defensive form to block her attack. Sun breathing. Fourth form, burning bones, summer sun, my circular slash was able to negate her attack, causing both of us to slide back. However, she got unlucky due to her foot getting caught in a root that was sticking out, causing her to lose her balance for just a second. Seeing the opportunity I lunged at her with a different form, sun breathing. First form, waltz my overhead slash was aimed at her sword, quickly cutting it in half, causing her gasp and shock. I quickly readjusted and aimed the tip of my sword at her neck ending the duel. For a while there was just silence as I kept my blade aimed at the water Hashira's neck until a chuckle escaped from Nozomi. So I assume Izuku just won. Silence was the only reply to her question seeing that I won, I took my sword away from her neck and offered my hand to help her up. She scoffed and just slapped my hand away before standing up and walking back to the other Hashira. Nozomi. I assume this shows that Izuku more than capable of helping the Hashira. Now I will tell you Izuku's second purpose. I have tasked Izuku with hunting and killing all the moons, so when we finally fight him, he can focus solely on his opponent and not worry about outside interference. Izuku has already killed lower moon 6 and 5 and any replacements for the fallen moons. However, I know for a fact that each moon after them will be harder than the last, if this was back in Taisho period I know for certain that Izuku could kill all the moons himself and fight the demon king, but times have changed. Also this is a great way to build relations with each other, is it not smiling, Nozomi. Anyway that's all I wanted to talk about, you each will be working with Izuku in hunting moons. You'll find out when I send the mission alerts. Also I must say this, do not tell a single soul what happened here today, not even to your Tsugukos or family members. This is now considered a corporation secret and cannot get out to the public. Have a nice day my Hashira and please be nice to Izuku. Izomi soon got up with the help of her children and left. After she left the other Hashira soon left also with them not making any effort to talk to me which I understood why. The water Hashira gave me a glare before leaving. The only ones that tried to talk to me were my parents, but I gave them a look saying that we'll talk somewhere more private. They understood and left shortly after until eventually it was just me, I sighed and quickly flickered away to head home. I hope everything goes according to plan as Omi, unfortunately we can only hope. CH.12 The Water Hashira Liko Pav didn't see that coming did ya, nah I'm just kidding you guys are smart. It's been two weeks since the Hashira meeting where we were told the bullshit about this new Hashira or something similar to a Hashira. How dare that bastard so easily become one and the gall to say we answer to him. I respect master with all my being, but that was still too much for me. I can accept a new Hashira, I was fine with learning his purpose, but I will not tolerate being told we help him. I don't care how strong or important his breathing is we are still his seniors, and we should be shown the respect of one. To make it worse the message I got from HQ it seems like I'm going to be the first Hashira working with him. What's concerning me even more though is it seems like Momo got a boyfriend and refuses to tell me their name or that he even exists. I mean it's not like I'm going to hurt him dot much. I got out of bed after laying there for a while, questioning whether I should kill Momo's boyfriend first or the new guy. I was broken out of thoughts by knocking at my door. Momo. Master breakfast is ready, Liko. I'll be there in a second Momo. I got out of my bed stretching a little while walking to my wardrobe. I opened to change into the uniform that I have worn far too many times, mine wasn't anything special, just the normal uniform with the traditional wave Hayori that has been in my family for centuries. I equipped my new sword to my hip, good thing the replacement came in just in time. I looked in the mirror before I walked out and as usual the same old me stared right back. The usual empty blue blues, the usual short spiky black hair, the usual scowl. Mom would probably say what happened to that beautiful smile. It died with Jiichi, Mom. I looked away from the mirror and started my short journey to the dining room for breakfast. The water estate was probably the smallest and plainest of all the Hashira estates. That mostly happened because my ancestor was a simple man and liked it like that. Eventually it just became genetic so the estate stayed plain. I walked by some of my apprentices that greeted me as soon as they saw me, they were practicing in the garden, probably to pass the time until they got a mission. I have eight apprentices all with varying skill the one thing they do all have in common is that I adopted them after their parents were killed by demons I was tasked to slay. Even though my face doesn't show it I love them as if they were my own kids, I hope they know that. 
I hate to say this, but I wish none of them will become my Tsuguko, but none of them are strong enough in water breathing to achieve that rank anyway. I know it's cruel to think that, but I don't want to lose anyone else. Though each one does have their strengths but far more weaknesses. Aka is too rigid with her movements and lacks the grace that's needed for certain forms, but she is definitely a kind girl. Yoko still needs to work on her arm strength, but she's getting there however she can always brighten a room with that smile. Michi has trouble with stamina due to a lung condition got while she was young, I still believe she can make a fine slayer. Nami is probably the strongest of the lot, but she still lacks refinement in her forms. I still need to work on her anger problems, but I probably wouldn't be the best option because I'm no better. Maybe I can get Asami to help me with that. Rini definitely has the grace in the forms, but her lack of strength cripples her, however, due to her small nature, she also has some confidence issues. A girl's night out should fix that, but maybe some therapy from Mizuki could help. Siki is the newest addition to this little family barely with us for a month. She is still getting used to all of us, plus she barely started learning the basics, so she's a work in progress. Gina unlike the others lacks speed, she has the strength and grace, but she isn't as naturally fast. She also can be a little blunt at times due to her lack of understanding emotions. Mizuki can probably also help her with that. Finally there's Momo, she is the oldest of the eight being the first one I found and saved. She struggled with everything and I could tell as the other girls came around and learned the breathing faster. She was suffering from self-confidence issues and even depression, it wasn't like she wasn't training hard enough, it just seemed like she wasn't compatible with water breathing. I recommended that she should start practicing a different technique, but she was determined to be just like me. The problem was I don't want any of them to be like me. When Momo ran off to final selection without my approval and also took it at that place. I was worried, scared, pissed all of the above. But imagine my shock when she came back alive, plus she finally performed a form. Ever since then she has improved drastically and I couldn't be prouder even if I don't show it. I stopped reminiscing once I reached the dining room seeing Momo had put my plate down already and was putting the rest of the plates down. I sat at the head of the table and looked at the food. Just some simply salmon radish a family traditional food. Don't know why though. I waited for the rest of the girls before I ate, they eventually arrived, and we said our thanks. As usual Momo made a masterpiece and got compliments from the rest of the girls, causing her to blush. Yoko. This is really good Momo, Momo. I just put it together I didn't do much. Nami. Nonsense Momo you're an excellent cook. Have more confidence already damn it, Liko. Calm yourself Nami. Nami. Sai yes master. Momo. How did you like it, Siki? Siki. I it's gee good. Gina. So Momo do you cook this for your boyfriend Izuku? Silence then the pressure came making everyone freeze, Liko. Tick mark sweet smile could you please repeat that Gina? Gina. I I ask if Momo makes th this for her boyfriend. Master's scary, Liko. Tick mark sweet smile know his name and all of it please. Momo. You um master why do you want his name? Liko. Tick mark sweet smile no reason. Suo, Momo when were you going to tell me that you had a boyfriend? Momo. Um you see about that. Um I was going to tell you because you know I love you as a mother. But I really like this boy and I didn't want you kill him. So please forgive me Bose. Liko. Sigh it's okay Momo I don't blame you. I can be a little crazy sometimes. Picks up glass cup to drink so what's his name and how long have you been together? Momo. Um I say about a month at most, he is really sweet once you get past the layers. I think you would like him master. Oh his name is Izuku Midoriya. Crack crack, they all look at me seeing the glass I was holding slowly start cracking. I put it down to make sure I don't make a mess or hurt my hand. Liko. Well would you look at the time. It seems I better start heading out for my mission. Be safe girls, I'll be back hopefully in the morning. Momo we need to talk we I get back. Momo. Okay master but are you mad master? Liko. Not at all I'm going to kill that bastard when I get my hands on him. Izuku Pav. Um, someone wants to kill me. Oh well maybe they'll succeed. Anyway I better start heading to the location I was given. Apparently I'm also going to be working with the water Hashira, Liko Tomioka. One of the main Hashira that was against my addition. So this will be fun also I feel like I'm forgetting something about her that someone told me once. 20 minutes later, I finally arrived at the meeting location which was just a simple a shake shop across the street from our target location. I could tell Tomioka was already there because there was a line trying to get in, and they kept talking about a Hashira was here. I made my way in pissing off some people I bumped into, but I had mission. Sure enough there was Tomioka surrounded by fans that were being held back by some of the staff. I made my way to the table before I could sit a staff member tried to stop me. Staff. Sorry sir, this table is reserved for the water Hashira you will have to find a different seat. Liko. He's with me, clear the store out. Staff. Right away Hashira-sama. 
You heard her the store is now closed until further notice. I sit down in the chair across from her, she didn't even look from her phone, unless it was to take a swig of the drink she has. Once the store was cleared and the staff went into the back. That's when an intense killing intent got leaked causing me start sweating. Liko. So you're the one dating my apprentice that's basically a daughter to me. Izuku. Oh fuck. Liko. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't kill you right now. Izuku. Um well um because Momo loves me. Liko. Dot. Izuku. Dot um, Tomioka-san. One minute later, narrator Pav. Izuku can be seen tending to his cheek where there was a large slap mark. Liko had now cooled down a little, but she was nowhere near done with Izuku. Now it was time to talk business, Liko took out a report that had everything they needed to know. Liko. From what the reports say Lower Moon 3 is hiding in Tokyo Resort, the five-star hotel across the street. We can't confirm but from our sources it is around 80% chance of it being true. Izuku. Anything weird happening in there? Liko. The staff reports of a odd odor that smells like sewage, but it only appears in the upper floors. Also it seems like there's been a steady increase of people disappearing in the upper rooms, especially the suites and penthouses. Izuku. Well from that info there's definitely a demon lurking there, but there's only one way to find out if it's the moon. Stands up is there any information on the blood demon art? Liko. None we're going in blind. Stands up I'll go straight to the upper floors to investigate while you track the odor and question the visitors. If anything happens we message each other. Izuku. Dot sure. Liko. Good, let's go walks away. Izuku Pav. We walk to their destination with the sun blazing high in the sky, with it probably being high noon. Liko and I walked and you could tell the hotel had lost some business due to the disappearances, which is probably is another reason why we're called in. To protect some investors' pockets, disgusting but necessary. Anyway the only people in the lobby were the staff that were ordered to clear the hotel out a couple hours ago, not that there was many guests anyway. A man walked up to us, you can tell he was scared and wanted to leave the building as fast possible. Liko. I assume you are the manager. Yes um the smell has gotten worse, and one of our staff hasn't returned from the 50th floor I'm sorry runs out like a Liko. Spineless wimp. The rest of you remain calm and exit the building, I'll handle this. Yes ma'am. The rest of the staff quickly followed their manager's lead. I looked at Tomioka and she just gave me nod before walking to the elevator. I knew what I have to do and it didn't take long at all to find the smell. I barely walked into the first hallway and it already smelled rancid, but when I made it to the stairs leading up to the upper floors, it got way worse. Stealing my stomach I made my way up and looked for its strongest area. It was around the 30th floor when the smell stopped going up and instead lingered. So, I made my way through the door and instantly got lightheaded due to the smell that almost made me puke right there. I got my nerves and stomach under control and continued my search while trying to cover my mouth with my hand. However, the smell was too strong to tell where it was originating from. The room started spinning causing me to fall to a knee to stop the dizzy spell. I got over it and stood back up to continue, but the smell was gone. I took my hand off my mouth and stood there confused for a while. Until I decided to keep looking on floor just in case. I turned the corner to the alleyway with the snow falling lightly. Izuku. Damn weather people always wrong somehow. They said it was supposed sunny. Eerie. Hurry up dad we're going to miss the movie. Izuku. Slow down Eerie we still have 30 minutes. Eerie. I know but I want to get there earlier for good seats. So hurry up, Izuku. Ha 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 I'm coming snowball. The easy. Liko Pav. The elevator stopped signaling that I made it to the 50th floor of the top floor. As soon as the elevator opened I was bombarded with the smell the manager mentioned, causing me to get a little dizzy before I covered my mouth. But as soon as it came the smell disappeared making me confused. I exited the elevator before it closed and started my investigation. Maybe check each room. No will take too long, perhaps I should use Midoriya as bait. Yes, that will work just fine. Lay my blood went cold, no it can't be him, I'm just hearing things. Yeah that's all. Gichi. Lay come on we're going to be late for the mission. Liko. No, no it can't be, shut up, shut up no, this isn't real. It can't be real right. Gichi. I'll see you at the meetup starts walking away. I saw Gichi turn a corner and instantly ran after him, I don't know why I did. I know this isn't real, but why did my legs still move? Way too easy. Narrator Pav. The large female demon that was at least 20 feet wide and 10 feet tall can be seen laughing manically as she feasts upon the worker the manager was talking about. She had long pink hair with specks of dried blood in it. She was also wearing or what used to be a white dress. Some of her most notable features is that she looks severely obese. Though if its actual fat is up to debate, the second most notable is the orange gas that leaking from her folds and is going into the vents around her, in what looks like a custom penthouse that even has demons that are dressed up as hotel employees surrounding her. The final thing that stands out are her yellow eyes that contain the kanji for Lower Moon 3. 
Her name is Hero the Mind Warper, Lower Moon 3. Hero? Too easy ha 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 Shira nonetheless what a easy kill what's even better is she detected my demon art but still choose to fall for it, what a dumb bitch. To top that I also got the boy, my king told me about it. Oh he'll be so proud I still remember the day my king told us about him. Flashback, this happened shortly after Izuku killed Doku. All moons walked through purple portals and looked up to a throne covered in shadows, with the only evidence of someone sitting there is the glowing red eyes with slits. One lira. What's the special occasion master? Did we lose a moon? U6. Doku and Overhaul aren't here so I assume so. King. Yes it seems the Doku wasn't as useful as I thought. Overhaul was already a disappointment so he doesn't matter. U1. I told you my love they would be useless. Dulira. Aw, oh, I thought he would at least give me an interesting blood battle. U3. Are we going to get weak replacements again? King. No matter I summoned you moons to kill as many people as you can. Also if you come across a boy with white hair and wearing green and black checkered Hayori, to kill him automatically and I will gift you a lot of blood. All. It will be done my lord. Bows. King. Then you are dismissed. Kurajiri open the portals. Hero. Oh I hope I come across the boy. Flashback ends. Hero. Oh I'm so lucky you two go kill the slayers and bring me the corpses. A two. As you wish madam. Quickly leave. Izuku Pav. Izuku. Iri slow down you got to wait up for me. Iri. Come on dad we're almost there. Iri turned down an alleyway causing me to shake my head in disappointment. The scream though made my blood run cold. The smell of blood made my legs move faster. No please not her I ran to her side and kneeled down, causing my pants to get soaked with blood. I tried to stop the bleeding but more just came out. Iri. Daddy it hurts. Please make the pain stop. Izuku. It'll be fine snowball, just keep your eyes open. P please stay with me. The ambulances should be on their way. Iri. Daddy why weren't you there for me. Wh why didn't you save me. Wh why is it getting so dark? Izuku. No Iri come on stay with daddy please don't leave me stay with me pp please. P please. My please fell on deaf ears as her ragged breathing stopped, her red eyes glazed over. Her beautiful white hair that was white as snow now sick pink. All I could do was cry and bring her head to my chest. If only if I was stronger. Your fault, your fault, your fault weak, weak, weak. Just a Deku. She would have been better off without you. How can you save the world if you can't even save your daughter? You useless Deku how could you ever stop him? Just go kill yourself to save whatever honor you have left. If you can't even protect your own daughter, can you save your love? The voice is right I'm a failure, I couldn't protect Iri, so how can expect to protect Momo? I don't deserve to live anymore. Maybe I should just stay here and die. Narrator Pav. As Izuku was crying over a white bath towel, a demon can be seen crawling towards him on the wall. Now let's see how the loner's descendant is doing. Liko Pav. I know it's not real, he's not real, but I have to make sure. I finally caught up to my brother, but the scenery changed to that fucking day. I looked around as screams filled the air along with the smell of blood and smoke. Buildings were either collapsed or on fire, bodies littered the streets with slayers from all over trying to stop demons. As I turned again I was on that damn bridge again watching Jiichi once again lean against that fucking guardrail bleeding out. I walked to him not noticing the tears falling down my face. Jiichi. Why didn't you get hit instead? I had the brighter future. Liko. Dot. Jiichi. It's all your fault. You don't deserve that blade or that title. Liko. Dot. Your fault 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 narrator Pav Liko can be seen just staring blankly as if the world was crashing around her. Eventually her knees gave out as she kneeled down crying her eyes out falling to notice the demon behind her. Izuku Pav Izuku. No. No. I would never let this happen not to any of my loved ones. This is a fake world, I would never let Iri get hurt. I pulled out my sword and cut my forearm causing the illusion to break and returning me to a hallway. I then swung my sword to the right killing a demon that was probably sent to kill me while I was in my trance. I covered my mouth to make sure I didn't take the air in which I assume is what caused the illusion. I looked down and couldn't contain the anger I felt as the Iri I was crying over was just a white towel. I picked up the towel and wrapped it around my mouth and nose making a makeshift mask and turned around and headed towards the stairs to reach the top floor. Izuku. Hold on Tomioka, I'm on my way. Liko Pav. Liko. I'm sorry Jiichi, but this wasn't my fault. All I can ask is to forgive me and to wait for me. I drew my sword and cut the demon's head off that was behind me, causing the illusion to break. I wiped my face before covering my mouth with a towel that was on one of the maintenance carts. All I felt right now was rage, and it was all directed at that damn moon. As I was running to where I assumed the moon was the stairway door burst open followed by Midoriya. 
one look at his eyes and I could tell he wanted the same thing. We simply nodded in understanding to each other before running to the main penthouse. Hero Pav, Hero. What how did they break out no 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 this isn't happening and they're heading here. It's fine Hero you got this get a hold of yourself you're a moon for fuck's sakes. I'm still stronger than them plus I got my henchmen to help. I can still win this plus they have to cover their mouths or I can just trap them in another illusion. Don't fail me Hero. My eyes widened in fear after hearing his voice. I promise my king I won't, just watch me and you'll be so proud. The only answer back was silence as I stared at the door waiting for the pests to arrive. Izuku Pav. As Tomioka and I were running we saw the penthouse, I took the lead while preparing a form to take care of the door and wall. Sun breathing. Eighth form, sunflower thrust. My stab destroyed the wall allowing us to enter and lay our eyes upon the ugliest demon I've ever seen. The demon was surrounded by many other demons, all from what I could feel around Lower Moon 6's level. Then the thing started laughing which made me uncomfortable since it sounded like someone choking on gravel. So you're finally here, coming straight to me just to die. Izuku. Shut up blob we're here to cut that fat head off your body. Who the hell are you calling fat boys kill them, Liko? I'll have to agree with my partner you certainly haven't looked in a mirror recently. Midoriya if you get the opening take it and I'll do the same. Izuku. Understood. Narrator Pav. Izuku and Liko charge together going in a serpentine pattern before separating with Liko going to the left and Izuku to the right. Forty demons each converged on the slayers with each slayer using different methods to handle their distractions. Izuku simply just cut off their heads while dodging their attacks, to others it would look like he was dancing. Liko however had to use her breathing to help her. Liko. What are breathing? Third form, flowing dance. Almost instantly the forty demons for Liko were dead and as soon as the last head fell. She rushed Hiro and was going to jump until Hiro grabbed a piece of the ceiling threw it at Liko, forcing her to jump back instead. Izuku was about to do the same thing as Liko, but Hiro threw two more pieces of the ceiling at him. Sun breathing. Third form, raging sun Izuku, unleashed two slashes destroying the debris, before he continued his attempt with Liko doing the same. Hiro getting desperate destroyed the ceiling causing it to collapse and exposing them to the outside. However, luck was on Hiro's side as the sun had set. Hero Pav. I looked around the rubble and it seemed those damn slayers got caught in it. That was too close for my liking, I better contact Kurajiri so I can set up a new base. Liko Pav. I pushed the rubble off of me slowly to not draw attention. Once I got it off I noticed the moon wasn't really paying attention anymore. It looked like she thinks we're dead, I tried to stand up, but pain instantly flared up my right leg. So, right's broken, but this is my only chance, I got up using my sword and started jogging to the moon before using a piece of the ceiling as a launch pad. Once in the air I readied my arms in X pose for the first form to make sure she died. She turned at the last second with wide eyes, but her face turned into Jiichi. This pissed me off beyond belief causing my eyes to water. Liko. You dare use his face go to hell water breathing. First form, water surface slash. I easily cut through her head causing the illusion to fade. Her body instantly started disintegrating, but I could feel the anger leaking off her. Hero Pav, Hero. No I can't die like this I still have to win my king over from that damn princess. Please my king help me. I love you. Pathetic, Hero. My king. Tearing up, Lower Moon 3 is now dead. Liko Pav, I sat down on a slab looking at Moon while extending my leg waiting for the ambulance to come. I didn't even notice Midoriya sit next to me or him putting a hand on my back or that tears were going down my cheeks or that it turned sobbing. I can't cry. Not anymore, come on you're a Hashira for fucksix. We sat in silence for I don't even know how long until he broke it. Izuku. Do you want to talk about what you saw? Liko. Dot no, not really dot but I know it's best if I do. Izuku. Whenever, you're ready. Liko. I saw my brother Jiichi. Izuku. Alive. Liko. No. Izuku. When did he die? Liko. I think it was seven years ago on, well have you ever heard of the day Japan bled? Izuku. Yeah, but just rumors. Liko. Let me tell you what happened. Flashback, it was my first mission along with our whole class, and our job was just supposed to be damage control from a lower moon while we waited for a Hashira to arrive. Unbeknownst to us at the time was that this was happening all over Japan. We still don't know why the Demon King sent his lower moons to create carnage, but they did nonetheless. My team was just me and brother because our class was only 8 in size, and even then there was some members who were just there out of luck. The lower moon came upon our class killing everyone but just me, my brother, and some coward that froze as soon as her team was killed. My brother and I tried to lure the demon away, but we barely were able to get it to a bridge before it landed in front us. We tried our hardest, but it was simply too strong we couldn't even break its skin. My brother went for the first form, but his sword just broke on impact. The demon tossed him away and picked up a motorcycle aiming it at me. 
I stood there frozen in fear even when the demon threw it, even when my brother screamed my name, and even when he pushed me out of the way. Before I knew it my brother was crushed against a guardrail bleeding out. I don't really remember much after that just so much anger. One moment I was standing there staring wide-eyed at my brother's condition, and the next moment I was standing over a disintegrating body while bleeding all over. I limped to my brother's side to hear his last words. Eko. Weak voice brother. Please stay with me help is on the way. Yichi. Cough you know I'm not living this is. Cough wheeze you'll be fine without me sis. Eko. No, I won't jai I'm not strong enough you said you were going to be the water Hashira. Yichi. Lei you just defeated a moon who are already a Hashira. Promise me this is. Eko. Anything. Yichi. Live. Live and become the best water Hashira ever. I know you can do it. Eko. I will brother. Yichi. Dot. Eko. Jai. Yichi. Dot. My brother died right before my eyes and all I could feel was anger for so long. Not long after help arrived and I was promoted straight to Hashira, even though I felt like a fake. I didn't talk to anyone for a while and had a short temper with everyone. The only reason why I was able to get better was because of Master and Momo and the girls. However, I will never forgive you a flashback end, Eko. That's why I told Momo I didn't want her going there, but she didn't listen to me. So what did that bitch show you? Azuku. She showed my daughter dying in my arms. Even though I know she's safe at home it still felt so real. However, I'll be fine once I see her. Liko. Daughter. Izuku. Adopted. Liko. Ah. We talked for a while longer he honestly was not that bad of a guy. I could tell he was thinking of Momo and his daughter Eri, but I know he most likely won't tell me or anyone. I can't believe what I'm about to say. Liko. I accept you. Izuku. Huh. Liko. I accept you as my equal and I'm sorry for doubting you. Izuku. No, it's fine I understand, but thank you it means a lot. Though I think I'm stronger than you. Liko. Don't push it. Izuku. Right, right. The ambulance finally arrived with the cleanup crew, they immediately started working on my leg. I saw Izuku was about to leave, but I wanted to say one more thing before that happened. Liko. Hey Izuku. Izuku. Turns around ya. Yeah. Liko. I also accept you with Momo. You better not hurt her. His face lit up with happiness and he nodded at me. Izuku. I would never Tomioka-san, Liko. Come on just call me Liko after all I'm going to be your mother-in-law. His face flushed in embarrassment before he nodded and jumped away. Yeah he ain't that bad. CH.13 please say yes. Narrator Pav. 8 months since last chapter. Nothing eventful has happened to our protagonist in these past months, besides the usual missions killing replacement lower moons, in order to get stronger for his mission. He hasn't had a joint mission with anyone since his mission with Liko. Speaking of Liko, she has finally started to call the girls her daughters, which shocked them at first, but they all quickly accepted it with the smiles on their faces. Izuku hasn't done anything really different besides the previously mentioned missions, besides his training with Eri and dates with Momo. Speaking of Momo, Izuku finally understood one thing about her, and that's he never wants to let her go. However, Izuku no matter what universe is a coward when it comes to women. Now let's see how our protagonist is handling this dilemma he has put himself in. Oh he's in a cafe asking for advice, I wonder from who? Izuku Pav, thought I'm a mess. How did I get myself in this dilemma? Please kill me now Kami-sama before I drown in shame. To say I am overreacting is an understatement, but I'm too far gone right now, so I'm here instead Izuku's commonsense. You see earlier today Izuku decided to leave me behind and do something rash that he can't back out of now. Simply because if we spent that much money already we might as well just go all the way. Oh by the way he bought a ring and asked Liko to gather her kids minus Momo to talk. Yeah we're probably going to lose a eye or something later. Oh it looks like someone is trying to put us back together. Achako slaps the hell out of Izuku. Achako. Calm down Izuku you're muttering at million words a minute now before you started having a word attack you said you had something to tell me. Izuku. I panicked and may have done a speedy purchase that I think I may not be ready for. But I think I won't get another chance like this so I can't decide what to do. Please help me. Achako. What did you buy that got you this worked up? Takes a sip of her coffee. Izuku. Dot airing. Achako. Spits all over Izuku what really? Izuku. Cleans face ya, yeah, I bought a ring for her. Achako. What made you take this huge leap? Izuku. I don't know honestly. I was walking home from a patrol just walking until I saw a small girl with her parents laughing and smiling. For some reason, I though of Momo and Iri, with one thought popping into my head that should be us. Next thing I knew I was walking out of the jewelry store with a ring. So, what do I do? Achako. Propose. It's obvious you love each other, sure this is happening a lot sooner than I expected, but I knew this was going to happen eventually. Also this can't be the only thing that's bothering you. Tell me Izuku. 
Izuku. I'm scared. For the first time in my life. I'm scared. Ichako. Izuku. Look at me. If Momo says no, no, if any girl ever denies your proposal, then they aren't the one. I know it would be hard if she did, but you have your family and friends to bring you back up from that dark place. It wouldn't be the end of the world. Also I know Momo and she would never say no to you, even if she thought she wasn't ready, she would still say yes because she loves you Izuku. There is nothing to be afraid of because I already know her answer. So cheer up Izuku, shoot your shot and live with the results. Izuku. Thank you Ichako, I really needed to hear that. Ichako. I'll always be here for you Izuku just like you would for me. So, this is the least I could do. Izuku. Well if there is anything you need help with just ask. But there is one more thing. Ichako. What? Izuku. How do you ask for a blessing? Ichako. You still haven't. Rubs head in annoyance of course you haven't just don't say anything stupid and you may keep eye. Izuku. Well better than nothing thanks Ichako I really do appreciate this. I have to go though Liko is expecting me soon. See you later. Izuku leaves. Ichako. Sad smile as long as he's happy. No stop it Ichako you can't be like that, dot but maybe in another life that would have been me. Oh well they love each other and I can't do anything about it besides be a good friend. A small tear escapes her eye before being quickly wiped doesn't mean that it still won't hurt. Narrator Pav. After his talk with Ichako, Izuku was feeling a little better about talking with Liko and Momo's sisters. However, he couldn't shake the feeling that he just made a grave mistake and was about to die. I mean what could go wrong Momo was out on a mission leaving him alone with the surrogate family and tomorrow was his and Momo's day off. So, what could go wrong? My god this guy is an idiot and he will probably die literally or die of shame because he failed to learn that the whole family was very protective of Momo. The last guy Momo brought home had to go to therapy and he was only there for a joint mission. Izuku now could no longer turn back now since he has arrived at the water estate. He hasn't met any of the sisters before, and his communication with Liko has been choppy due to conflicting schedules. Not wanting to delay the inevitable anymore Izuku rung the doorbell making his presence known. Izuku Pav. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. I can't do this she's going to kill me. She barely gave me permission to date Momo, and here I am about ask for her daughter's hand. Oh I'm so fucked. The door opened in front of me revealing a girl probably around Yuri's age, she was wearing a wave patterned kimono like Liko's Hayori, her eyes were bright green, which complemented her semi-long blonde hair. She was a little on the shorter side, but I could feel she was probably a tad weaker than Yuri. Quite impressive for her age, however when her eyes landed on me she instantly smiled which almost blinded me from the pureness. Oh you must be Momo's boyfriend she told us so much about you. It's nice to finally meet you, my name is Yoko Tomioka Hagakur. I'm sorry to tell you this, but Momo's on a mission today and it'll take a while. Izuku. I know Hagakur chan I'm actually here to see your sisters and your master, I have something important I need to talk to you guys about. Also, it's nice to meet you too the name is Izuku Midoriya. Yoko. Oh okay come in and sit at the dining room while I go get everyone. It shouldn't take long. Izuku. Thanks. The house was the definition of simple and bland, no real decorations besides pictures of the current Tomioka family. However, they had a little shrine memorial where it looked like they put the pictures of all the former water hashiras and apprentices. Most likely all dead one way or another. While Hagakur chan was leading me to the dining room we passed by the training garden, where it seemed Liko probably trained the girls. It had a small pond in the middle with salmon in it. Besides that it had the usual training dummies and practice swords. The dining room had the same usual no design or decorations which Hagakur chan left me in, so she could go find her family. I sat at the end of the table to wait for the family. It didn't take long for Hagakur chan to gather her family, the girls arrived confused on who I was probably due to Hagakur chan probably being the only one that asked about me. Liko arrived last though she was expecting me she had a look that screamed, this better not be what I think it is. Liko. Nice to see you again Izuku. May I ask why you asked for this meeting with me and my girls. Izuku. Likewise Liko. But can I get some names to these pretty faces. Nailed it. Liko. Strike one. Go ahead girls, he is in complete trash, and if you haven't figured it out yet this is Momo's boyfriend. The girls besides Hagakur chan gasped in shock, most of their faces went into a scowl instantly. Which confirmed to me that this would be harder than I thought. The girl with brown pigtails and brown eyes stepped up first she looked around maybe 10-ish, very short compared to her adoptive sisters, though she had a small smile when she heard the news, so maybe I do have hope. She was also wearing a wave patterned kimono like Hagakur chan, actually they all were wearing the same thing besides Liko and three of the girls. Rini. Hello, my name is Rini Tomioka Kamori. I hope master doesn't kill you if that means anything. This time a tall girl stood up with a glare directed at me. 
She had long silver hair with silver eyes to match she looked around maybe 17 or 18. Unlike the other girls she wore a silver Hayori with a lighter tone Demon Slayer uniform. She was maybe a couple inches taller than Momo, but her body was less dot refined than Momo's. Gina. The name is Gina Tomioka Yanagi and I don't like your face. Way to plain for Momo. Another girl stepped up probably to voice her opinion along with Yanagi-san. She had black messy hair similar to mine with black eyes matching. She looked like she had little sympathy for me, but still held her doubts. She also looked around 17 years or so and wore the same Hayori as Liko with the Slayer uniform underneath. Michi. Hello, my name is Michi Tomioka. I'm sorry about Gina she can be blunt with her thoughts sometimes. This time a girl that held a scowl and a glare on her face stepped up. She had a faded short haircut that left a lot on the top, with it mostly being pink. Her yellow eyes held a lot anger, and honestly it looked like she just wanted to kill me. She also wore a Slayer uniform, but this time her Hayori had a pink wave pattern on it. Nami. This Deku doesn't belong anywhere near Momo. Yoko. Be nice Nami, Momo loves him very much. Just give him a chance and introduce yourself. Nami. TSK Nami Tomioka Ishido. Yoko. See that wasn't so hard. The last two girls stepped up together with it seeming like the older of the two helping the other with her shyness. Evident by the younger one hiding behind her. The older one looked around 15 or so with long dark green hair with matching eyes. The younger one looked around maybe 8 and she had short white hair tied in a ponytail and a magenta-like eyes. They both wore the wave-patterned kimono. Taka. Hello my name is Taka Tomioka Tokich. It's nice to finally meet you and this little one is my sister Siki. Come on introduce herself. Siki. Steps out a little from behind Taka H. Hello my name is Siki Tomioka Yuzui. Aye aye it's nice to meet you. Izuku. Same to you and also to the rest of you. Momo told me great things about you guys. Nami. Cut the crap. Why are you really here? Liko. I would have to agree with Nami, Izuku. Why are you here? Izuku. Oh great Kami, please make sure I leave alive today. I came here to ask you all for permission. Liko. Permission for what? Izuku. Takes a deep breath I want permission to propose to Momo. All the girls minus Liko. What? Nami. Not going to happen. Yoko. You're going to be our brother. Gina. Momo deserves way better. Aka. Oh my. The loud slam stops all the shouting. I looked to see Liko had been the one to slam the table with her hair covering her eyes. She stood up and started walking to me. Well I tried. I'm sorry Momo it looks like you're going to have to find a new boyfriend. I bowed my head to at least make the beheading less painful, but a hand instead was placed on my head. I looked up in shock to see Liko having a small smile on her face. Liko. Small smile please make her happy. That's all I ask. Small tears came out of my eyes, and stupid grin came onto my face. Izuku. Thank you and I will until the day I die. Time skip, next day, 6.30pm. Narrator Pav. Izuku can be seen with putting on a suit with Hiri, Tashi, Inko, Master and Izumi sitting around talking words of encouragement for Izuku, so he doesn't puss out. All had the same feeling for Izuku in their hearts, pride. Hiri at first was a little reluctant in the idea of Izuku marrying Momo, because she believed that Ichako was better fit, but she saw Izuku genuinely happy with Momo, so she let it go. The parental figures for Izuku just felt proud for the young man before them. Izumi was ecstatic. Well Master remained his usual non-caring self though he won't admit it he was also proud. Izuku was wearing a simple black tuxedo with his hair once again having some green back in the roots, with the rest still being white. To say Izuku was nervous is an extreme understatement, Izuku is downright terrified right now. Muttering up a storm which he has never done before, hopefully it doesn't become genetic. Izumi. Calm down Izuku everything will be alright, she'll say yes. Izuku. But what if she doesn't? Dad how did you propose to mom? Ashi. Oh I kinda just asked her one day, and she said yes. Izuku. Damn that was useless, what about you master? Ever married? Tashi deflated after that hopefully that doesn't become genetic either. Master. Nope. Eerie. Dad calm down. You know Momo loves you and you love her. This isn't hard just propose, and if she says she isn't ready doesn't mean you have to stop loving her or her to you. Izuku. Thank you Eerie, I'll try. I better get going it's almost time. You'll find out tomorrow if it's good news or bad news. See ya. All. Good luck Izuku. Izumi. Oh fuck how am I going to tell his simp club he might be engaged. They don't even know Momo and Izuku are dating. It didn't take long for Izuku to arrive at the water estate to pick up Momo who had her hair down and was wearing a strapless red dress that highlighted all the right places. After that they started walking to the nearby fancy restaurant where Izuku got a reservation for though it did cost an arm and a leg. You my viewers may be wondering it's night and they're going out to eat and have a date, what about the demons? 
It's simple my sweet viewers due to the demon's known presence for the last 200 years, the government has made safe zones which are usually jam-packed with wisteria trees and slayer patrols, so some areas are safe for travel at night, though it's still not recommended. This restaurant just so happens to be in one of those areas. Back to the lovely couple that are now sitting at their table eating their main course. Momo. So you still haven't answered me, what's the special occasion for all this? Izuku. I can't spoil my girlfriend with a nice date, also I told you, later all will be answered. Momo. Come on just tell me already, don't be mean to me. Izuku. Nope, anyways I heard you got a promotion what rank are you now? Momo. Oh I did I'm at Tsuchinoto now I'm happy, but I'm still one below Izumi and Shoka, so I got some catching up to do. Izuku. Hey that's good though it means you're getting stronger. Do it now you coward. Oh my god yes I will. Izuku and Momo turned to see a man had just proposed to his now fiancé, and were now celebrating. Effectively ruining Izuku's moment which caused Deku to go to plan B. Momo. Anyways I'm finished what about you? Izuku. Same, let's go I want to take you somewhere before we go back home. Momo. Led the way then. After paying Izuku took Momo's hand and started to lead her to the same park they went to on their first date. Unknown to Momo, Izuku was fidgeting with a box in his pocket. They soon arrived at a small grove of wisteria and looked at the full moon together. Izuku psyched himself up real quick to do what he wanted know what he needed to do. Izuku. The moon is lovely tonight isn't it? Momo. Yeah it really is. Izuku. Momo I need to ask you something. Momo. What is it? Izuku. Do you love me? Momo. Of course I do. Izuku. Would you be there for my darkest days? Steps back a little. Momo. You know I will. Izuku. Would you love Eri as your own? Momo. I already do. Izuku what or why? Izuku. Would you stay by my side until the day we die? Starting to kneel. Momo. I Izuku. Izuku. Momo will you marry me? Shows the ring. Izuku Pav. Silence filled the space instantly causing me to look away from Momo. Damn it I knew it was too soon, I ruined it fuck, she's going to say no. A small hick made me look up to Momo who had her mouth covered with her hand and tears falling down her face. S, she's crying. A smile erupted on her face before she tackled me into a hug, making me almost drop the ring. Momo. Crying and sniffling please take care of me Izuku. Izuku. Tearing up I will with all my body and soul. Puts ring on her finger. I'm too blessed, I really am too blessed. Thank you Momo for being the one to completely destroy the darkness on my heart. We shared a kiss as the wisteria trees seemed to glow in the moonlight around us. This is what I wanted no I needed, thank you my creaty. I don't even remember going home that night. Narrator Pav. Location. Unknown. The man sitting on a throne can be seen looking down through a portal with a fleshy edge to spy on Izuku, and Momo's little proposal with slight interest in his red slit eyes. He couldn't help but smirk with a little playfulness and mischievousness in his eyes. So you're soon to be married huh? The man snapped his fingers, and two demons appeared before the man, their eyes slightly glowed showing the kanji for Lower Moon 2 and 1 kneeling before their king. Reveal yourselves to the slayers and kill the boy I told you about before get it done. Now leave. The demons quickly replied, yes my lord. Before disappearing in the same fleshy portals. My love it seems this boy has your interest a pair of eyes open behind the man with both of them covered in shadows, each having their eyes as the only discernible features, with the new voice's eyes saying upper moon one. I want to fight this boy it is peak and need those useless lowers to make him improve. Oh I can't wait to fight him. Said the male with excitement in his voice. I don't think he would stand much of a chance my love, even if he does eventually awaken his mark and red blade. Plus that last sun breather was a complete waste of time, didn't you let him live after you broke his blade? Said the female with doubt evident in her voice. I know the boy's extremely weak now, but I'm hoping he put up a fight later on. Also, yes the last sun user was a letdown. What did you say this new one's name was again love? Izuku Midoriya the last sun breathing user, trained by that old coward Hera Midoriya. End chapter, next chapter ch.14 massacre, time for some modern secrets, Siki is the descendant of Tenjin Yuzui the past sound Hashira, her family continued the sound breathing and shinobi tradition, until they were all slaughtered by upper moon 3, leaving Siki as the only survivor of the family. Izuku actually got swindled when he bought the engagement ring, he paid almost double the original price. Izuku is too embarrassed to tell anyone. Izumi has turned down both Bakugo and Todoroki for dates, saying that she saw them only as brothers. Effectively destroying both boys' confidence and starting their pursuit for Momo which obviously also failed. The Kanroji family in honor of their late daughter, became doctors solely to help treat slayers and offer little rest stops for them. To this day they still have family members working as doctors in the Kanroji hospital chains and attendants in the Love Hashira's diner.
CH.14 Massacre, Narrator Pav, two weeks after the proposal, 9.30 am, it didn't take long for Izuku to get the next call for a moon. He would have preferred to stay with Momo a little longer, but he needed to get this done. Izuku can be seen jumping from rooftop to rooftop to the meeting location which is a high school that is still in use. The report said that there might be a moon hiding among the students or the staff, but this moon being immune to the sun, rare but not impossible. Ever since the Demon King became immune every once in a while a demon gets that lucky trait. Any demon blood art is unknown, and Izuku will be working with Mizuki Harada, the Shadow Hashira and his Okanakoyama, the Stone Hashira. Izuka was an extremely tall man by Japanese standards standing at 6'5 with brown curly hair and green eyes, he unlike the other Hashira, didn't wear a Hayori, but just a uniform. Mizuki had wavy jet black hair that had grey tips and black eyes, she wore a hexagon style Hayori with a black base and dark grey lining. Izuku however has not worked with these slayers before, so he is a little nervous. Izuku arrived in the front of the school and watched in amusement as the stone and shadow Hashira were hoarded by fans and students of said school. Ah the beauty of not existing. Thought Izuku with a smirk on his face that quickly got noticed by his Oka from the corner of his eye. Oh Midoriya san come join us we were just about to meet the principal shouted his Oka, which caused half of the fans to rush Izuku questioning him on how he knows the Hashira. Well played stone, well played. Thought Izuku as he was consumed by the crowd with his Oka laughing loudly and Mizuki just standing there dot just standing there. A minute later, after the crowd finally dispersed with students going to class and civilians going about their day. We can see the slayers standing together waiting for one of them to break the ice. Hello we didn't really get to know each other before, the name's Izuku Midoriya. It's nice to meet you. Said Izuku to Mizuki and Hizoka who were silently grateful he broke the ice. I mean Hizoka and Mizuki have worked together before, but it's usually very awkward or just straight business. Hello Midoriya-san, it's nice to meet you also the name's Hizoka Nakayama, and this is Mizuki Harada she doesn't talk much. However, I will be honest with you, I still have my doubts about you, so let's see what you can do. Said Hizoka while Mizuki just stared at them with a blank face. I see, well I won't let you down. Let's go see this principal. Said Izuku with enthusiasm which Hizoka returned with nod and followed Izuku inside. Mizuki continued to stand there. SHE still standing there. Mizuki meanwhile that whole time was panicking inside her head on how to respond to Izuku's hello. As you may have guessed by now Mizuki is extremely shy and has a hard time communicating with people especially men, which is why she usually does joint missions with the female Hashiras. Okay play cool Mizuki just say hello back, but what if they think my voice is weird? No, come on do it coward don't disappoint, master and Inko senpai shouted Mizuki in her head as she tried to hype herself up. H hello oh my and Nami is Ms. Mizuki, Nai nice to me et you. Stuttered Mizuki to no one, when no one responded Mizuki looked up and saw no one was there. She turned around and saw Hizoka and Izuku walking into the school. They left me behind shouted Mizuki in her head as a nime tears fell from her eyes, along with her soul leaving her body out of embarrassment. Inside the school, Izuku, Hizoka and a depressed Mizuki can be seen walking to the principal's office. Luckily the students were in class and couldn't hinder the slayers from their target. They soon arrived at the office and let themselves in where they found the principal working on some paperwork. He looked up and saw the slayers, his surprise was short-lived as he went to his business mode. Hello, Hashira Samas what is the pleasure of having you at my school? Asked a principal who stood up from his chair and gave a small bow before gesturing them to sit on his office couch. Good morning Principal Tanaka. My colleagues and I are here because we believe you may have a demon lurking in your school. Have you noticed anything strange or have there been disappearances of students? Asked Hizoka keeping a keen eye on the principal ink as he is the target, Izuku and Mizuki doing the same. He doesn't have the aura or feeling of a demon, so he's good, but he might have been manipulated to forget incidents. Thought Izuku as his colleagues also came to same conclusion. The principal thought about the question a little too hard as if it hurt to even think about it. Why yes there has been something wrong here. This school used to have many students working to be slayers, but that has started drastically decrease. Said principal out of breath as if it took all his willpower just to say that small information. Why is that? Asked Izuka as he noted the struggle the principal was having. BB because all the Slayer hopefuls started going missing outside of the school. Slowly, as more cases popped up the amount of requests for training went down to almost zero. Said the principal who seemed like he just let a huge weight of his chest. Izuku soon felt a huge ill intent and instinctively looked out the window and saw a student on the roof looking down on the office before walking away. It knows we're here now, a sunwalker as well. This will be troublesome. Thought Izuku with a frown, as Hizoka finished with the principal and asked if they could look around which the principal quickly approved. They left the office and started walking the halls that was now filled with students all staring with awe, so what now? 
ask Izuku as the crowd was mostly ignoring him so he didn't have problem walking. Since you can move freely, search for the demon and keep eye out for the students. Said Hizoka as he signed another autograph while Mizuki was having a panic attack that no one noticed. Understood, good luck and be safe. Said Izuku as he walked away to follow a girl he thought he saw give them a glare. To you too. Come on Haradas and let's go to the cafeteria there's probably a lot of students there to watch. Said Hizoka while Mizuki gave a small nod which she praised herself in her head for being able to do that. But Izuku, first floor, hallway, 11.45 am, Izuku was following a girl with messy blonde pigtails because he felt something sinister off her. He noticed her while they were standing in the hallway, giving them a creepy look before walking away. He would have wrote it off if it weren't for that look and the feeling he got from her, if she isn't the demon, then she might be working for it. She went into a boiler room for some reason making Izuku wonder if she was about to report to the moon. Izuku took out his blade and started his approach to the door. But Hizoka and Mizuki, second floor, cafeteria. 11.45 am, Hizoka and Mizuki can be seen watching the students start filing in for lunch with a good portion staring in awe at them. However, neither Slayer could wipe the feeling that something bad was going to happen. They noticed that some of the students glared at them, but they didn't think much of it since all the missing cases recently. Currently there is around 13,000 students in this school, with about 3,000 in the cafeteria at the moment. It was a mixed school of middle and high school which it was also one of the few non-slayer schools. You could still train to become one, but it wasn't a part of the core curriculum. It has three floors with them being on the second floor. Izoka and Mizuki were about to leave since they didn't notice anything off with students, but before they could leave they were stopped by a bunch of students asking for autographs which they obliged. But Izuku, basement kinda, boiler room, 11.50 am, Izuku walked down at the ready checking his corners and looking through the pipes for the girl. Izuku reached a little open area surrounded by pipes that were releasing steam. Where the hell did she go? Thought Izuku as he scanned around until he felt a presence behind him which he turned around instantly to nothing. You know it's kinda creepy to follow a girl to a secluded spot. Izuku turned around again this time with the girl in front of him, but her eyes seemed to glow in the dim room. Her yellow eyes though slowly turned into kanji for lower moon too, causing Izuku to raise his guard. Well I wouldn't really call you girl anymore, now would I? Taunted Izuku as he prepared his forms in case this moon tried something. Diggle funny and cute. The name's Toga or Himiko, what's yours cutie flirted Toga as she leaned forward to try and get closer to Izuku, before a blade went straight through her neck, cutting her head off. I'm engaged so go to hell already freak. Said Izuku as he put his blade back in his scabbard, but quickly took it back out, as the body instead turned into a pile of blood instead of ash. Oh my feisty one too. Mommy loves feisty said Toga as she walked out of the shadows causing Izuku to turn towards her. As long as you share I believe we can all enjoy ourselves, one way or another. Said another Toga that it appeared a couple feet behind Izuku causing him to pivot, so he was facing both Togas. But I don't like sharing. The last time we shared I didn't get a round or a piece. Complained a third Toga that appeared behind Izuku causing him to freeze and get nervous. Shit is this illusion. No I can feel them so this must be a blood art, but she has to have something else. She wouldn't reveal herself unless she had a plan, and if she has a plan then that means this is a trap. Thought Izuku as he eyed all the togas around him who were circling him like sharks who found some prey. I still can't believe Master never told us he was such a cutie. Said a toga as she licked her lips causing Izuku to shiver in disgust. So their bastard king sent them for me. He must be worried that I will get too strong. Thought Izuku as he prepared a form. Sun breathing. Seventh form, beneficent radiance Izuku swung around him as the togas charged with a kitchen knife at the same time causing all of them to get cut up before all turning to blood. Shit shouted Izuku before he got kicked into a wall by a toga, but luckily it didn't do any damage to him. You shouldn't be wasting so much time on us blood clones. I mean who's going to protect the students? Taunted a toga as three of them stood in front of Izuku with smirks. What did you do demon? Said Izuku in a cold tone with his eyes narrowed in anger. We didn't do anything. I mean you might have to protect the students from each other. Who knows what can happen when that many people consume master's blood. Said the toga as they all started howling with laughter, as Izuku's eyes widened in horror as alarm went off above them, along with screams that were filled with terror and pain. It didn't take long for Izuku to rush out of the boiler room as the clones to continue to cackle with laughter. With Hizoka and Mizuki, just as soon as Toga made that food comment, second floor, cafeteria, 11.59 am, Hizoka and Mizuki had small smiles on their face as they watched the kids laughing with each other, but their faces morphed into confusion and concern, as most of them seemed to have gotten a stomachache. Then the demon alert alarms went off shutting down the school completely, locking down the cafeteria, shutting all windows with metal and a red light, followed by emergency alarm going off. 
As they looked back at the kids after looking around at the lights and unsheathing their weapons, their faces morphed into horror as they watched almost all the kids were demons and were attacking the remaining survivors. Blood quickly covered the room causing Hezoka and Mizuki to grit their teeth in frustration before leaping into the fray to try and save the survivors. Though Hezoka hesitated when the first demon lunged at him, he completed his form anyway. Stone breathing. Third form, stone skin shadow breathing. Fourth form, dusk. Hezoka instantly kills ten demons by swinging the axe side of his weapon, beheading all of them, and protecting a couple of students that had bad injuries, which unfortunately looked like they wouldn't make it. Mizuki looks as if she's traveling in the shadows, as each time the red lights blinks off five demons drop with no heads. After her form ends due to her slightly slipping from all the blood on the floor, she had already killed 50 demons, but more just kept coming, causing the Hashira to get in each other's way giving Hizoka idea. Stone breathing. First form, Serpentinite Bipolar. Hizoka throws his axe and flail at the locked door, while rotating it with the chains making a makeshift drill, easily destroying the door and a small portion of the wall. Mizuki goes search the school for survivors, and that damn moon while I handle this shouted Hizoka as he started spinning the flail part of the weapon. Mizuki didn't need to be told twice as she darted out of the room at immense speeds. I'm sorry children, I failed to protect you, and now you are abominations. Hizoka said solemnly as he stared at the demons in front of him with pity before his eyes hardened. As my duty as a Hashira and to atone for my failure. Let me put you to rest. Said Hizoka as the, the demons lunged at him the same time he threw his flail at them. But Mizuki. Second floor, east hallway, 12.15 pm. Mizuki was running down the halls killing any demons that crossed her path. It seems the moon put some demons in hiding. Damn it this was a trap from the beginning, now all those kids dot no focus Mizuki complete the mission, kill the moon, save the kids and go home. Thought Mizuki as she turned down another hallway before stopping. Down the hall was 50 demons munching on some kids, while some were trying to break down a door to a classroom. Mizuki quickly prepared a form by lowering her sword down to her knee. Shadow breathing. Fifth form, abyss. Mizuki slipped into the shadows, quickly cutting off all the demons heads before reappearing at the end of the hallway. To outside observer it looked like all the demons just collapsed instantly, though the form has a cost. Mizuki can be seen leaning against a locker panting pretty hard since she had just used her strongest. Mizuki got her breathe back and started walking to the room that the demons were trying to break into and knocked. But Izuku. First floor, west hallway, 12.15 pm. Anger is the only thing Izuku felt right now as he maneuvered through the hallways as he continues to pass by corpses, with each one increasing his rage. He hadn't come across any demons yet as he assumed they moved to upper floors because they had killed all the remaining survivors on the first floor. However, Izuku held hope and made his way to the gymnasium, which is usually the most protected when the alarms go off. Though that hope died as Izuku arrived at the gym and saw blood leaking from under the containment door. Izuku easily sliced the door open so he could check to make sure, but he soon regretted it as what he saw would surely haunt him for a long time. It was just blood and corpses everywhere, most of them at the door as if trying to get out, but there was one figure sitting in the middle of the gym sobbing to themselves. The figure was a boy who barely looked Yuri's age maybe a year older, he had spiky black hair well what used to be black hair, but now was full of blood. The boy was facing away from Izuku as made his way through the corpses, but Izuku could already feel what he was. Izuku stood behind the boy as the boy turned around showing his black eyes laced with tears, but the more noticeable features to Izuku were the two horns protruding from his forehead parallel to each other and his mouth that was covered in blood. I didn't want to mister I just wanted to eat my lunch in here. But I got so hungry, I couldn't stop myself until they were all I did this why did I do this, cried the boy in anguish as Izuku's face stayed the same with no interest in what he was saying. Izuku drew his blade out of his sheath which the boy noticed but didn't say anything. Expose your neck and tell me your name. Ordered Izuku with no emotion in his voice as the boy slowly lowered his head while crying softly. It's Kota Izumi. Tell my aunt I'm sorry. Requested Kota as he awaited his mercy, Izuku raised the blade over his head with no hesitation. I pray that in the next life you will live with no demons and never become one. Be proud you died with humanity. Stated Izuku as he brought his blade down snuffing out another demon's life. Izuku stood there in silence for a few seconds after he put his blade back before turning around and jogging out to look for more survivors. But Hizoka. Second floor, cafeteria, 12.30 pm. Hizoka can be seen crushing another demon heads with his flail, while his axe cuts another one's off. The room was at around 7,000 or so demons before now it was a little over a hundred, and Hizoka showed no signs of stopping. Stone breathing. Fifth form, Arcs of Justice shouted Hezoka as he manipulated the chains so that the axe and the flail would take out separate demons, killing both instantly. The couple tears started falling down his cheeks as he continued his assault. They aren't like the other demons. They didn't ask for this, but I know that I have to stop this myself. 
Forgive me children it won't hurt for long. Sadly thought Hizoka as he crushed another two demons with his flail as the tears continued to fall. But Mizuki, second floor, biology room, 1240 pm. Mizuki stares at the few survivors she has found four high school students and one middle schooler, all with terrified faces with one girl bleeding out pretty bad. You keep pressure on the wound. I'm going to look for more survivors do not open this door unless you hear three knocks. Ordered Mizuki as her timidness disappeared due to the intensity of the situation. The group only nodded dumbly before she left and started running up the stairs to the third floor to continue her search. Mizuki turned down a corridor before spotting 50 demons standing there as if guarding something before one launched themselves at her. Before they could hit her she was already gone as if he tried to attack his own shadow. Shadow breathing. Second form, a gloomy overcast. The demon that had tried to hit Mizuki all of a sudden lost their head, then the next demon and the demon after him. The rest of the demons tried to run, but you can't run from your own shadow. As the last demon fell Mizuki walked over to a music room, opening it to five more students, hiding all looking scared out of their mind. Go to the biology room and knock three times it should be clear. Though now well it's safe. Ordered Mizuki as the students quickly followed her orders scurrying out. Mizuki however didn't notice that one of them stood behind her with a sick grin. Thank you so much, Miss Hashira we could have never found the others without you. Stated the student as they walked closely to Mizuki. I thought I told you to G shouted Mizuki before she got interrupted by a cold knife entering her abdomen. With Hizoka, second floor, cafeteria. 12.45 p.m. Hizoka stood silently in an empty but bloody cafeteria with tears flowing down his face. His flail and axe covered with blood along with his hands. Hizoka then slapped himself breaking him out of his trance. Come on let's go look for Midoriya-san and Harada-san. Thought Hizoka as he started to jog out of the cafeteria before stopping in the middle of the hallway. Stone breathing. First form, Serpentinite Bipolar. Hizoka aimed his attack above him making a giant opening in the ceiling, then jumping up into the hole entering the third floor. Harada-san probably already searched the second floor, and Midoriya-san is most likely still on the first floor, so all that's left is the third floor. Included Hizoka as he started jogging through the halls, but it wasn't long until he found Mizuki sitting on the floor against a locker while holding her stomach in a small pool of blood around her. Harada what happened? Shouted Hizoka as he crouched next to her helping apply pressure to the wound. The moon dot wants Midoriya dot they have multiple arts dot it, can shapeshift dot take me to the bio room dot second floor dot other survivors dot knock three times. Croaked out Mizuki before she passed out from the blood loss. Hizoka not wasting any time picked up Mizuki bridal style, then sprinted towards the bio room. Come one Izuku it's all up to you now. Defeat this fucking demon. Thought Hizoka in anger as he finally had arrived at room. But Izuku and Izuku Pav. I was angry. Everywhere I went just more blood and bodies but not a single demon. I felt a new feeling today futility. I couldn't save the many of them and to make it worse it was all a trap for me. I caused this dot this massacre. No, I need to atone for this, I need to kill that damn demon. Then I will kill their fucking king, I didn't even notice Harada-san running towards me until she shouted my name, but something was off with her. Oh Izuku I've been looking everywhere for you did you miss me? Said Harada as she tried to do a sexy pose, but I knew something was wrong with her. Is she the moon, but I thought her ability was clones. Before she could get any closer I cut off her head and just as expected it turned into a pool of blood. Narrator Pav. Doga jumped from behind a corner with clear annoyance written on her face. Hey how did you know I had her voice down shouted the toga, as if she were throwing a tantrum. You don't understand emotions or social cues so it was pretty easy. Now do me a favor and die. Said Izuku as he appeared in front of this toga about to cut her head off, but this time she actually dodged it, instead of taking the hit. So she's the real one. Concluded Izuku as he tried again, but was quickly dodged and counterattacked with a small knife that Izuku knocked away. Izuku however, noticed that the knife glowed faintly as if it were hot. Two togas then broke off of the man toga attacking Izuku with knives, but he quickly disposed of them, which made the main toga cringe slightly, which didn't go unnoticed by Izuku. Three separate arts, but how? Well doesn't hurt to ask. Thought Izuku as he stared at toga who looked a little nervous. How do you have so many arts? Asked Izuku as he readied his blade for anything. Toga looked confused before breaking into a wide grin. Oh that simple eye before Toga could continue Izuku had already cut her head off as it rolled on the ground. Sun breathing. First form, Waltz whispered Izuku as Toga started to disintegrate with tears in her eyes, begging her king to save her. The pleas fell on ears that simply didn't care as he continued to watch in amusement at the pleas. Toga was bullied as a child due to the weird mutation as a kid being born with fangs. Demon was the more tame insult she received as she grew up. She looked up to the Hashira and other slayers wanting to be like them, until one of them had a little fun with her when she came for autograph. 
broken and traumatized Toga didn't even realize when she walked through a portal and ended up in front of a king that was giving a offer she couldn't refuse. Izuku walked over to the principal's office where he found the man dead, he pushed the body over and used the intercom to tell everyone that the moon was dead and that he's lifting the lockdown. 8. Dot out of the 12,854 students and staff in the school only 8 survived. The media and the public went into a frenzy since the last time an incident happened like this it was complete chaos. HQ was able to settle down the presses a little, but there was always tension after that. The incident was named the Massacre of Aldera. Izoka, Izuku, Mizuki and the remaining survivors were required therapy for the next couple of months. Mizuki quickly recovered from her wound with the attack, luckily not hitting anything major. Hizoka, Mizuki, and Izuku became good friends after the incident, using it as something in common to talk about and help get over the guilt. Izuku also not on purpose but instinct never let Iri out of his sight after the incident. Now only one lower moon remains and it only gets harder from here, how will Izuku manag? Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.